Hey guys, I'm back, like Brittany. <laughs> All right guys, today we are going to be talking about carving with ball burrs, uh, extremely versatile burr, pretty much everyone uses all the time. Just going to touch on a couple different things uh, you may or may not know yet, so we will jump right into it and get carving. All right, first one we're going to start off is this very large uh, carbide ball burr and we are going to create a hammered metal effect. Uh, it's just, you can see how I do it here, it's pretty easy, but you definitely need a larger burr to do this effect. And for all of the burrs that I use in this video, I'll leave links in the description to where I buy them. for a ball burr is stippling. Um, I do apologize for the noise. Currently it is pouring down rain so sorry about that but we will get through it. Okay, um, stippling you can do a ton of different, um, well I shouldn't say a ton of different things but uh, depending on the size of the burr that you use will make the stippling effect different. So you can use stippling for um, within a design, like in the background, in the negative space, do it a lot, uh, or you can do it around the uh, design in order to bring the, the design out more. Um, so it's kind of up to you. In this example, as you're seeing right now, uh, I'm using kind of a smaller burr to kind of highlight uh, what we just did around the um, beaten metal effect look. Now, just a few things about ball burrs themselves. Uh, with carbide burrs and even diamond dust burrs. Um, carbide burrs, your teeth or your cutting edges are going to kind of come to a point at the top of the burr. So you are still going to need to hold the, your handpiece kind of at a 30 degree angle um, in order to get the best cut. If you do it vertical to the surface, um, you are cutting on the rotational point I'm not sure you engineers out there can tell me exactly what uh, that term would be, but um, it's not turning as much as the outs outside edge of the burr, so just the cut is not as great. Um, same thing applies with diamond dust burrs. If you do it like this, um, it's not going to cut as well. It will cut better than the carbide burr, uh, but just not as good. Now most of the time in my videos, you are going to see me using carbide burrs over diamond dust burrs. and I think that's probably just a personal preference. I can't speak for the carving community as a whole, uh, but carb carbide burrs just cut a lot quicker. If you're looking for um, a, kind of a slower, more controlled cut, then diamond dust would be uh, the better option. You do see me using it. It's not like I don't use them, uh, but more often than not, um, I'm going stippling or something like that, where it's just uh, very quick cuts are perfectly fine. Next up is carving letters. So anytime you see me carving a letter that has a curve in it, so like an S, an O, a P, Q, stuff like that, um, you're going to see me using a small, or depending I guess on the, uh, the size of the letters that you're carving, but generally like, um, let's see, like five millimeter? I could have that wrong, but like a number one of five uh, Dremel, as far as Dremel bits go. Um, but yeah, just a very small ball burr, carbide burr, works really well uh, for carving out any type of letters. Another great use for ball burrs is roughing out a design, especially something that has a lot more uh, dimension or contours to it. So I will kind of do, like I said, the rough draft of a design uh, first with the ball burr, cut down all the material, and then come back um, with possibly even a ball burr again, um, maybe a smaller burr to do details, uh, but most likely, most likely something like um, um, a football type of diamond dust burr to kind of smooth things out and then uh, add detail with other various burrs. And last 
lastly, what I use ball burst for a lot is simply outlining a design. Um, if you saw some of the previous videos, I talked about this a little bit, but I'll use a ball burst, especially a design that has a lot of curves on it. I'll trace it and then come back uh, with a couple different burrs and clean it up. But the initial kind of sketch or outline of the design, I do use a ball burr for a lot. And again, it's kind of up to you if you want to use a diamond dust uh, ball burr or a carbide burr. The diamond dust cuts a little bit slower, but again, it's kind of a more of a, a steady controlled cut as opposed to the carbide burr, which cuts a lot quicker. Okie dokie folks, so that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. I do hope that you take some ball burrs of your own and uh, create with it, practice with it, kind of discover some of the cool stuff you can do with them, uh, whether it is on bone or skulls or even on wood. I uh, hope you kind of explore and start to discover some cool stuff for yourself. Please do consider subscribing uh, if you are not already and if you are a subscriber, thank you. I uh, do appreciate you checking in every single Monday with me. So. Alright guys, I will see you next week.